Hey YouTube, welcome back to Taylor Talks Tales. I'm Taylor and today I have a book review for you. This was actually a request done um, by one of my subscribers, which I'm already excited about that I have almost 30. I thank you guys so much, um, especially since I only started this channel a couple days ago, so I'm very excited um, and very excited to be doing this request for one of my subscribers. Um, they had noticed that I had a specific book um, on the shelf behind me and asked me if I had read it, and the answer is yes. In fact, um, I'll be doing a bookshelf tour at some point pretty soon, and most of the books that I own I have read. I just, I like to do that so that way I can, you know, recommend them to people and stuff like that. Um, I do have a small TBR shelf, but for the most part I try to um, read all the books that I own. So. The book I'm going to be reviewing today is My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. And before I read the back cover for you guys, I just want to say I adore this cover. I adore the way the book is put together. It just looks amazing. It's so 80s and just has that VHS vibe to it that I really, really like a lot. Um, even if I hated this book, I feel like I would still have to own it just because I think it's so fantastic looking. Um, thankfully though, I do not hate it. Um, I did enjoy it, and as soon as I read the back, I will let you know why. High school sophomores Abby and Gretchen have been best friends since fourth grade, but after an evening of skinny dipping goes disastrously wrong, Gretchen begins to act different. She's moody, she's irritable, and bizarre incidents keep happening whenever she's nearby. Abby's investigation leads her to some startling discoveries, and by the time their story reaches its terrifying conclusion, the fate of Abby and Gretchen will be determined by a single question. Is their friendship powerful enough to beat the devil? Like an unholy hybrid of Beaches and The Exorcist, my best friend's exorcism blends teen angst, adolescent drama, unspeakable horrors, and a mix of 80s pop songs into a pulse-pounding supernatural thriller. So, I really enjoyed this one a lot. Um, just, I, I really enjoyed the female friendship aspect of it because I feel like ultimately a lot of books don't really explore um, friendship or especially female friendship um, because that's a very powerful root of this story is exploring that and exploring what happens when you have a friend who all of a sudden changes. Um, I kind of feel like this book could have been a metaphor for somebody who's going through addiction or um, really bad mental health problems or trauma or something like that where they something happens they come back and they're different and you're sort of struggling to interact with this new different person and helping them um, so ultimately the two characters at the heart of this book are Abby and Gretchen um, and and basically yeah, they, they start out with their friends in fifth grade, and, and everything in this is just like very, very 80s inspired, um, which even though I was born in the 90s, um, I grew up watching a lot of 80s movies and reading 80s books. Um, my parents are both super into 80s music, so I was very exposed to the culture of the 80s. Um, it's one of the reasons why I loved Stranger Things, that, and I think it's one of the most perfect shows, um, at least for me, because everything just kind of came together with it. Um, and so, yeah, there's like a scene in here where Abby, the main character, she has like an E.T. themed birthday party and then goes to a roller rink for the birthday and I'm like, oh man, that's so great. Um, and one of the things I also really appreciate about this book is that each chapter is titled after a 80s song, which I thought was very cool. Um, in fact, let's see. Yeah, one thing leads to another is one. Um, it's the end of the world as we know it and I feel fine. It's the end of the world. Yep. Um, and just like a bunch of others. So it's very, very entertaining. Um, I would say that the bulk of the book, it's very, it's very atmospheric and it has just tons of nostalgia dripping in it um, and like teen problems and friendship problems and all of that. I wouldn't necessarily say this is a scary book. I feel like it's not really, I wouldn't consider it really horror. Like it, it touches on the horror genre and ultimately demon possession is at the heart of this, but I don't, 
reading it, if you go into it thinking it's going to be this horror book, I think you'll probably find yourself a little disappointed. Like there are moments of horror for sure. There's a couple um, like pretty descriptive, like gross body horror scenes and stuff. Um, and then there's the supernatural elements. Um, which, of course, in this book, for a good chunk of it, it's sort of a, is she possessed, isn't she possessed? Um, and then there's a lot of exploration as to, like, if she wasn't possessed, what would the reason be behind it? Is it drugs? Is it AIDS? Is it who knows what? Is it, you know, somebody getting abducted and being tortured? Um, and this also takes place in 1888, where there's a satanic panic going on, so there's some elements of that. Um, so when you look at the book, not really as a horror book, but just sort of a, you know, a book with horror elements that's more kind of a cross-genre-esque book, then I think it's pretty enjoyable. Um, just if you're looking to be scared, I don't think that this is going to be the book per se, but it doesn't mean it's not good. I think it's very well, very well done. Um, in fact, this is my favorite Grady Hendrix book that I've read. I've officially read, um, well, aside from his paperbacks from Hell, because that's non-fiction really, so I don't count it, um, but I've read Horror Store, um, We Sold Our Souls, and then this one. Um, we Sold Our Souls I also really enjoyed, um, and I'll do a review on that, but that one had slightly more problems in it for me than this one did, so I'll do a review on that um, at some point. And then Horror Store was just kind of meh. Um, so I think this one is probably the strongest book of his. Um, I'm looking forward to there's a book coming out um, of his in like six months or something about that, like about um, vampires in the south and like some women's book club. Basically, they're gonna go and fight vampires or something like that. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. I think that'll be a lot of fun. Um, and I do do recommend you check it out. Um, there is some. I mean, this is the '80s, and so I think he's trying to be very authentic with it. But you know, there's there's some slurs in here. There's a little bit of homophobia, I guess, but at the same time, it's the time period. There was lots of racism and homophobia in the 80s, and I think it w it makes sense because this is supposed to take place in the 80s, so if everybody was super woke, I don't, you know, I, I think I think it, f it fits the book. I think it tried to be as authentically 80s as possible, and I think he did a good job reading this. Um, I talk to somebody who's a little bit older than me who remembers the 80s a little bit more and she was saying yeah you know this is you know one of the better nostalgia books that's come out so anyway check this out I ultimately would give it four out of five stars definitely solid four out of five stars very enjoyable I would read it again um, did have its fair share of issues and I do think um, it could have been a little bit stronger with this story, and I think the ending, um, while sweet, I think I would have preferred it to not, uh, a little bit different of an ending, if that makes sense. Um, but overall, great book, please check it out, and then let me know, my dear subscriber who requested this, if you um, want me to do the in-depth spoilery type review, I can definitely do that. Um, and yeah, so thank you so much for watching my video, please like, comment, rate, subscribe, um, and I will talk to you guys later. Thank you so much, and happy reading!